Okay, I think we can start with this, please. Okay, uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the international webinar, Sustainable Waste Management and Circular Economy in Indonesia, Challenges and Opportunities. This international webinar is a pre-event of the 11th International Conference on Sustainable Waste Management and Circular Economy and IPLA, Global Forum 2021. This international webinar is organized by Center for Southeast Asian Studies, this is Indonesia, and as a part of ASEAN project. I would like to welcome all the distinguished speakers and all participants. So my name is Gendis Ayu Satiti Irawan. I'm an associate researcher in CSIS Indonesia, and I'm the moderator for this international webinar. So before we start, I would like to inform you the ground rules uh, for our today's webinar. Okay. So the ground rule is all participants are pleased to change his or her Zoom account name with format organization slash country slash name, for example, CC slash Indonesia slash Julia. The QA session will only be done through the chat box in Zoom and YouTube Live. Please identify your name and organizations and your question. So the moderator will select the most relevant questions to be answered and the question could be delivered in English. So that's the ground rules. So first, we are going to um, hear a keynote speech first from Professor Sadan Kumar Ghosh. So um, I would like to introduce first uh, Professor Sadan Kumar Ghosh. So Professor Sadan Kumar Ghosh is a professor in mechanical engineering at Jadavpur University, India, and is now serving as the Dean of Faculty of Engineering and Technology at the same university. Professor Ghosh is renowned with personality in many scientific fields, such as waste management, circular economy, grid manufacturing, supply chain management, sustainable development, plastic waste management, and recycling. So Professor Ghosh was uh, the director of CBWE in the Ministry of Labor and Employment, the Government of India. And Professor Ghosh is still currently involved uh, as the consultant of the United Nations Center for Regional Development. So, Professor Ghosh, the time and floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Gendis. And uh, I must express my gratitude for inviting me to this forum, to Mr. Arisman and Professor Woon Fatima, who are also working with me jointly for some time. And I can also see one of my friend, uh, Ratna Rajmavati here. I can see the name, Yes. but uh, I don't know whether I have many friends here or not. I mean, I was very happy visiting Semarang in 2019 and then Jakarta. So I can see the difference between these two cities. One is very small, other is very large and uh, Jakarta, uh, I mean, I took, I took nearly three hours from my hotel to reach uh, airport. And uh, it is known for its uh, uh, traffic jam for some time, specifically during the office hours. But I don't know whether this has improved or not. Of course, this will definitely enhance the PM level in the environment with respect to the transport is concerned. But what I was very much interested and impressed, uh, I was impressed that uh, uh, instead of uh, vehicles uh, run by petrol or diesel, uh, throughout Jakarta, there are a number of cycles, bicycles, which are available at any of the places. And uh, one can buy the ticket for hiring it and going at a faster rate than the cars and reaching the destination, keep the uh, cycle at that place, uh, at the designated place and come back. So this will definitely reduce number of things. One is the PM level, the pollution level, 
The second is, you know, that ELV, end of life of vehicle. I mean, in most of the cities throughout the world, you cannot run the curve for more than 15 years. Many of the cities are dumping those cars without utilizing those cars. So that will also reduce, but of course it will enhance the industry of bicycle. So there are many examples which I have seen, but I was very happy in two things. One of my friend in Indonesia uh, presented me a very beautiful chart which has number of, I mean, uh, beautiful decoration. And uh, in, in many of the places I used to wear that uh, shard and uh, my friends uh, in India like very much that design, the textile. And the other thing, one of my friend uh, took me to a hotel in Indonesia where they served me with 32 plates and different types of food. I can't remember the type of food, uh, the system which uh, it was, but I remember that for quite a long time. Uh, I, I was really enchanted to see that many plates on the table for me to eat. Of course, not all I'll eat. They asked me to choose the plate and I could take those things. So these are the things which really attracted me in Indonesia, of course. The friends in Indonesia and the people are in Indonesia are very simple and they are very friendly. So with this, I like to share my screen. Of course, I'll not take much time because many other experts are here to speak on the circular economy uh, in Indonesia. So uh, you know that Indonesia, I'm quite sure that Indonesia will make her significant presence as a CE compliant country very soon. I'm working on circular economy with around uh, 25 countries. So I have seen that out of those only a very, very few countries. In Asia, you can just count Japan and South Korea, uh, to some extent, Australia, China, and India. These are the five countries who are going ahead with respect to the implementation of the circular economy is concerned. And when I was discussing with my friend, Arisman, that, uh, 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 circular economy will be implemented very soon and there will be a document from the government uh, the initiative for implementation of circular economy by 2030 or 2025. I was very happy and we discussed a lot on this issue and I'm quite sure that in Indonesia will take a significant role in expanding the circular economy not only Indonesia, but also it will help other countries who are well behind the scenario. Why we are interested in circular economy, waste management and others, we should be concerned about the extraction of the material which is happening throughout the world. And enormously, we are extracting the material and if you, if you look into the graph and also the data which I'm showing here, that uh, uh, in last couple of decades, only four decades, the extraction jumped from 26 billion tons to 92 billions in 2017, in, in around four, uh, four decades. But if it continues, then it is forecasted that from uh, now, it will be nearly double or 2.5 times by 2050, which is not good for the human being to stay here, to live here, and also not good for the future generation. So in that way, what we have to do? We have to reduce the extraction of the natural resources. So if the natural resources extraction has to be reduced, what have to be done? We have cycling, West Man and all other things. So the same thing, you know, that uh, if, we, if we talk about India, 
India is now extracting material nearly three to four, three and a half times of the world average. We are extracting around 1,580 tons per acre, but whereas the world average is only 450. I'm not sure what is the uh, extraction rate in Indonesia, but this will be available in the uh, some, some document. I was searching, but I did not get it. So the main focus of us is to reduce the extraction from the natural resources, uh, uh, natural resources, and I'm quite sure that Indonesia will be able to do this. If we look into this uh, table, I can see that uh, uh, there are a number of countries. I included Indonesia this morning. And uh, if we look into this, we'll see that there are a number of tons, million tons of waste which we are generating. And these are all data for recycling, collection, and all these things. And ultimately, at the end, the last column will give you how much we are dumping into the landfill. So if you compare the data here, you will find that there are some country, like say, if we talk about Korea, South Korea, they have improved a lot with respect to the dumping. And dumping not only municipal waste, dumping of all the types of waste, whether it is industrial, construction and demolition, medical waste, biomedical waste, plastic waste, uh, electronic waste and whatever are there. So if, Indo if South Korea can do it and they can reach uh, at a single uh, uh, numerical value of the dumping in the dump site, then why not Indonesia or India? That's why, and these are all Asian countries and having the same culture of like Indonesia, India and uh, South Korea. So uh, that's why I'm quite sure Taking the example of different countries, we can go ahead and we can make our presence significant throughout the world. And uh, you know that there are a number of countries, say 80, 82, 97%, 88%, these are the dumping uh, possibilities. Of course, Indonesia at present is not in good shape, but I, have, I was just list, uh, seeing one uh, uh, government report it says that nearly 16% in 2019, and now it is around 21% of materials are being recycled. On the other hand, the dumping and uh, uh, treatment to energy recovery, all these things is 34%. But similarly, in a, a private, I mean, the published journal I have seen nearly more than 85% of the waste is dumped into the dumping ground. So uh, uh, we have to check what is the reality in Indonesia. And these are also the, but one thing which is very nice. So with respect to the circular economy implementation is concerned in Indonesia, what I have seen is they have not taken all the areas of concern, but they have identified only five areas where the waste generation is maximum in Indonesia. One is the food and beverage. Of course, food and beverage, it is not only Indonesia, but also Asian people waste more food than other countries. So in that way, food and beverage is one, textile, construction and demolition, wholesale retail and electronic waste. But I would have uh, 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 interested to see also the plastics in this list, because you know that the waste plastic generation and dumping in the ocean and other places, the riverine and also the environment, I mean, marine environment. Indonesia has a significant role who is playing, uh, it is playing in disposing to the ocean, uh, ocean environment. So in that way, I was interested to see uh, within the major five sectors, plastic would have been another one. However, I'm not looking into this because this is a disposal uh, uh, history of uh, the world. And we can see always that the whether waste generation, whether waste dumping, these are more always and taking a significant uh, uh, I mean, role within the Asia and the South Africa, I mean, Asia and African countries. So you know that what is happening in India we have taken a, good, uh, a significant role in the implementation of circular economy. 
In 2016, we have revamped, we have revised all the waste management rules around five waste management rules. And very recently, the battery rule. We have revised all the waste management rules in 2016 based on the concept of circular economy and 5R. And I'll request the expert in Indonesia also. I'm not sure that I, I, I know a little about the co-processing of Indonesia in Indonesia. Indonesia is not taking a lot of initiative in co-processing of waste in cement plant. So this is one of the area for the researchers as well as the policymakers, then they can think of co-processing of waste in cement plant. And this converts all the waste partly in energy and partly in cement. So if you put waste into the cement column, the uh, recover uh, the uh, uh, inert or the disposal is nearly zero. That means all the 100% um, percent of waste is utilized in cement plant in getting some resources. And these are the types of waste which we can utilize in. Most of the types of waste we can utilize in the cement plant. And uh, if we talk about the why CE, CE will be implemented, there are a number of ways, economic benefit, environmental benefit, social benefit, and the fourth benefit is image building throughout the world. You know, COP20, uh, very recently we had that seminar, I mean, uh, conference. So uh, Indonesia can make a uh, role playing in that particular conference. So image building of the country is another area of circular economy benefit. What is circular economy? I'm not going to the detail. Circular economy, I have recently given a definition of circular economy in one of my books. The mainly EPCD2, we are looking into it, that extract, produce, consume, dispose and deplete. Why dispose and deplete? Instead of de dispose and deplete, we should think of the conservation of all the kinds of resources, high life cycle, redesign of material and energy recovery, all through the processes, redesign the whole process, end of life of cycle of specific use of a product will still be fit for utilization of that material for a second production process. And thus, we can make a closed loop material cycles. And as a matter of fact, the extracted, once extracted material is not disposed into the dump site and depleted. So this is uh, circular economy. So circular economy in very simple word, once we just extract the material, we should not dispose unless and otherwise it is un unusable. And we have to design the process and the material in such a manner that for a long time, for a more life cycle, the material can be used. And this is the basic concept of circular economy. And uh, you know that uh, we must look into the product, we must look into the parts, regeneration, maintenance, and all other things, and the cycles of the material. These three are the main focus of the circular economy. Really, I mean, that way I was giving you an example of the uh, hiring the cycle. This is a very best example of implementation of circular economy in Indonesia. And I, I spoke to many of my friends about that to implement in our country. We have implemented in our country in some of the cities, but uh, it is a great example of uh, circular economy implementation in Indonesia. You know that, uh, this is the type of commitment in India we have now towards the implementation of circular economy. Very many people, they're taking oath that we have to have an effective waste management and the circular economy. And from 2016, in, from 75 municipal city, now we could involve in circular economy and the waste management 4,242 cities. And we are, our, our system is going ahead and I'm quite sure that India will also very soon uh, place itself as a significant C compliant country in the world. And of course, for Indonesia, uh, these are the benefit, not only for Indonesia, for any uh, country, if we implement circular economy, 
there are a lot of benefits like we have to use lighter material, lesser consumption of energy, lesser generation of waste, manual intervention less, different flow of manufacturing process just to be shortened, packaging material. We are not to wrap one gift with number of packages because if you, if you see there are a number of this, there is a practice of wrapping the material, a small gift, but wrapping, it makes a bigger size so that a big gift has come to me. But ultimately we can see that there are a number of disposal procedure and a very small gift. So reduce the resource consumption and reuse by many more and the, using the valorization technology. And I'm sure Indonesia will make her significant present as CE compliant country very soon throughout the world. And I'm quite sure that this will be this webinar will be helpful for all the researchers and the industry policymakers uh, today. And I once again thank uh, Mr. Adisman, uh, Fatima, and Gendis for taking pain for holding this pre event of Icon SWM 2011. And you know that these are these are my commitment to the society. So you can collaborate with me for the research. You can work for the organizing committee for the International Conference on Sustainable Waste Management Circular Economy. You can submit paper, your paper, which will be published. And uh, this will be from December one to four. And this is the email. And of course, for uh, Indonesia, Mr. Arisman and Fatima are the contact person for this ICON SWM. And I, of course, invite you all for joining this conference uh, from December 1 to 4. And with this, I must thank all of you for your patient hearing. Over to Gendis. OK, thank you very much, Prof. Sadan Kumargosh, for the insightful uh, keynote speech. So we know that the circular economy is very important because we uh, extract uh, so many raw materials from natural sources. And since we have limited resources, so we have to urge to implement the circular economy. Um, uh, thank you. Thanks again to Professor um, Saden. Uh, so uh, next we're going to um, have Dr. Yun Arifatul Fatima. Good afternoon, Dr. Yun. You are still in. Okay, hello. Yeah. Okay, I will uh, introduce you briefly first. Uh, yes, you. So, Dr. Yuni is the Dean of Engineering Faculty at University of Muhammadiyah Magdalang. And Dr. Yuni graduated and received her PhD degree in Curtin University, Australia. Her works are mostly in the area of remanufacturing and sustainable manufacturing. So, Dr. Yuni, the time and floor is yours. Okay, yes, thank you. Can you see my screen? Yes? Yes, yes. yes we can see your screen. All right, okay. Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, good uh, morning, Professor Sadan, and also uh, Dr. Arisman, and all uh, distinguished speaker and also participant. Thank you very much for the time. Actually, today I would like to uh, uh, explain about small thing. It is about the auto part circular economy in Indonesia. It is actually uh, one essential part in Indonesia. Uh, it's related to a 6R strategy, which is called the manufacturing. And uh, I did some research on it, uh, and I also had collaboration with uh, Japanese, my Japanese colleagues and also my Australian colleagues working on this remanufacturing uh, industry. So for, uh, as introduced by uh, the uh, moderator, my name is uh, Yun Arifatul Fatima, actually as an um, associate professor in industrial engineering and in Universitas Muhammadiyah Magelang. And my research also uh, focus on this remanufacturing area and also sustainable engineering, but it is not limited only to this sector, but also I work in waste management, circular economy, 
and also energy efficiency. And currently I'm uh, doing a project, research project under Danida Research Project as with uh, collaboration with the Southern University Denmark uh, from 2021 and then until 2020, uh, sorry, 2021 to 2023. And uh, uh, it is about the Indo-Circular Waste Management in Indonesia. So this is the outline of my presentation today, Indonesia automotive industry growth and auto part circular economy and also optimally untapped remanufacturing, remanufacturing chains and also sustainability keys. And as we know that if we look at the figure, actually this is uh, the old uh, auto part uh, and also component is just not longer uh, used by the person or the owner. And then if we use the linear economy, so this will be a huge a problem. This will be a big problem for us. But when we consider this and we try to transform this using the new concept of circular economy, so this will be huge benefit not only for the economic but also for the social and also for the environmental aspect. So we can look at here from the old uh, material and part we can transform this all the use and of life or people say this is actually uh, just a waste and then transform it into as similar as new with warranty to met. So this is actually the concept of remanufacturing. We try to transform the end of life product into a product which is similar as new product with the warranty. But before uh, I start, uh, sorry. So we look at first to the vehicle growth in Indonesia. And it is known that the total of vehicle in Indonesia is about more than 105 million in 2019. And this is actually a very uh, big number. And this uh, big number distributed into five is distributed in the Java Island. It is contributed about uh, six, more than 67 uh, million vehicle. And then in Sumatra is the second contributor for the vehicle. And then Kalimantan, Sulawesi, and Bali. As I mentioned previously, that if we look at this situation with the huge number of vehicle, and then we can imagine if this vehicle uh, go and then to the end of uh, their lives. So we can imagine how much and then the lot, we will have a lot of waste uh, around us. And if we look at this in the different way, if we look at this uh, from the circular economic point of view, as what uh, mentioned previously by Professor Saddam, so it will be actually a potential and opportunity for Indonesia to get a value, to get something which is important for our economic, social, and also environmental benefit. And, then, uh, and this also can be uh, noticed and we understand, especially for Indonesia, that we like to use our car for long time. Even my dad has a 50 years car in uh, uh, his car uh, port. And then this is actually not a good uh, idea to keep a car, a old car in our uh, house. But this is the reality, the culture in our society that people in Indonesia, usually they use a vehicle more than 20 years. 
even more than 30 years, not like the, in the uh, developed country, we use probably they must replace uh, their vehicle after five years or probably after six years or maybe based on the regulation each year, they must replace with the new one with the uh, low emission and some more environmental impact uh, benefit. But in Indonesia, we can see here that uh, our culture or maybe the regulation has uh, has not placed to uh, regulate that we must keep our vehicle and certain time. So, but if we look at the ideal situation that the average vehicle is from zero to three years, we need repairment about 15% for their part or for the company. And from the uh, from uh, four to eight years, so they need about 50% of their part to be repaired. And then more than eight years, so there will be more than 75% repair this requirement. So this is actually, we can see here, one small, probably like a, a small Honda, they actually have more than 30,000 parts. So this is actually something which is a very interesting will be opportunity if they are economists or businessmen. So this is actually money. How can we get this? This is actually not waste. This is actually a new resource. How can we get this? And how can we transform this to be the new value? So this is actually what we have done in my research actually. So uh, we use the circular economy in our previous research based on this actually uh, this culture or maybe uh, our uh, yes our common life that the useful life of car in Indonesia is taken average up to 20 years and that during use there will be repairing refurbishing remanufacturing reuse maintain and it is, of course, it could be expected that the requirement of use part would be more than uh, 250 billion part. And then this is actually, wow, this is a good, actually good idea, good business, something like that. And this can be actually become a money, become a good value for the environment if we can use this for. Uh, we can do like reuse, repair, refurbish, remanufacture, remodification, and also recycle. As we can look at here in the circular economy concept, that this is there will be collection process, and there will be also the option for the maintain for the uh, uh, old uh, company, which can be maintained, and then it can be also reused, can be redistributed or refurbished or remanufactured, and also the last thing is to be recycled. But the optimal of this uh, six uh, strategy is remanufacturing, because I have made a, a research on it, and this actually the optimum uh, value we can get for the economic aspect and also for the social aspect and so for the environmental aspect. Because for the reuse, they only, so the economic value will be low, but of course for the material recovery, they will be high, but the environmental also high, but for the economic value, this is not good. Because we cannot sell uh, this uh, product uh, as, as similar as a new product. For the repair, they're the same. We only change the broken part and also uh, change it with the new one or just repair it. So there is no a new uh, material uh, uh, placed in this uh, our product. So for the economic value, this is also not that good uh, uh, situation. Dr. Yun, sorry, yes. sorry to interrupt, but um, yeah. our time is uh, limited. Maybe we can okay. move faster. All right, all right, okay. So this is also for the repurpose, the manufacture, and then based on my previous research, I had a research on the alternator, and then also for the starter, and also for the uh, steering gear box. It is actually the component or part which is possible to be remanufactured. And then this is actually my also result from the uh, research. 
it is actually for the remanufacturing we still need to make the modification from the beginning what material we need to use actually for example like if we use all component and or we combine with the new component or we use the recycled component or we use the old component so we must mix combination to make the sustainability is on the balance level and then uh, next is that this is also the technique and found the sustainability of the manufacturer for that because I have also uh, found this in my result and then based on the other reference they also uh, convinced that the remanufacturer uh, not only give the potential economic social environmental benefit but also for the technical benefit for the reliability for the durability they are also as similar as new so this is actually a very good opportunity for us to make this a business make this a strategy to be applied this actually the figure how the material saving can be uh, can be uh, can be on here so this all for example like the probability of the reuse and then we can see here 80 percent 90 percent for a for single uh, component so this all actually the material we can be saved and then this is the embody energy saving also which uh, can be opportunity for us if we apply for the manufacturing and then for the GHG emission this also a uh, good potential and the question then is are manufacturing technically sustainable from the technical point of view yes because i have done the research on this and then the reliability the durability they are similar as new and also this can be see that this all uh, component they have potential to be reused there's also 100 percent 1990 percent also uh, 19 uh, for example like 97 70 percent and uh, so on and are manufacturing economically sustainable based on my research also because this exceed uh, the manufacturing reduce raw material and natural resource costs it can be 30 to 40 percent lower price than new one for the manufacturing part uh, even 50 to 60 percent for the fabric part and 70 to 80 percent for repair part Reduction of manufacturing uh, costs approximately 85% and to 90% uh, of the energy use in manufacturing original product preserve. And for the reduction of transportation is also approximately about 50 to 60% of the cost can be saved. And are manufacturing economically and socially sustainable? Of course, yes. And then increase social benefit and also in this environmental benefit. However, this is many of these uh, the manufacturing, repair, refurbishing, uh, and then remodification is conducted by small, medium enterprises, even micro. So this is actually the problem because they cannot develop without the supervised uh, supervision from the uh, government. There are actually uh, some challenges uh, faced by the, the micro, small, medium enterprises. For example, like regulation, uh, implementation, and re uh, reinforcement, and also community motivation and awareness, industry commitment and action for the large industry, and then prohibited repair or prohibited manufacturing. Sometimes it's confusing for the small, medium industry, and then by big use of the more uh, expansive contractual provision to clarify scope of right related to warranty and also the license. Because sometimes we need to uh, add a new technology to the product and we need to register for the new license. And this is also the availability of quality course, material, and also the advanced technology. Uh, the small medium enterprises lack of the technology and also availability of funding so this is actually some of the key to get the uh, to be placed uh, for supporting the micro small uh, medium enterprises which is uh, which is implement which implement the uh, remanufacturing 
So standard operational procedure from the policy first actually, and then technology and also some of the market penetration, customer community, industry responsibility, property right pattern, and also some of the standard of recyclability and efficiency and design. Actually, there are a lot of challenges uh, is still happening and faced by the small medium enterprises. But I think that I'm still uh I'm, 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 I still believe that the circular economy to the manufacturing, to repairing, to uh, refurbishing can be uh, support uh, to achieve the global sustainability in Indonesia if we work together to achieve this situation. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, thank you very That's much. Actually my for the insight, the Torian. So we just uh, hear about um, the other perspective from circular economy come from um, auto parts. Uh, yeah. Let me highlight several things that uh, there are so many benefits uh, in remanufacturing, such as uh, can reduce manufacturing costs about 80 to 90%. And also it's uh, have uh, job opportunities and reduced extraction of raw materials. So thank you very much, uh, Dr. Yun. So if you have any questions, uh, to all, uh, all participants, if you have any question, you can uh, feel free to chat in the box. Okay, for our next speaker is uh, Dr. Ima Dewahyu Widiarsana. So good afternoon, Dr. Wahyu. Good afternoon, yes, thank you. Yeah, so I will um, introduce uh, first. Uh, Dr. Wahyu is a lecturer and researcher at Faculty of Civil and Environmental Engineering at Bandung Institute of Technology, ITB. He received his doctor in Environmental Engineering Department at ITB. Dr. Wahyu has been involved in various research uh, projects, include landfill rehabilitation and waste. So he is experienced working at Directorate General of Human Settlements, Minister of Public Works, Dissemination and Socialization Engineering. So, Dr. Wahyu, the time and floor is yours. Thank you. Can we see our presentation? Yes, it's already shown. Okay, thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Emmanuel Wildersana. I'm a lecturer or a researcher and head of a solid waste and assembled waste management laboratory yeah, in Institute of Technology Bandung. Before we begin, uh, I would like to thank Asiano for uh, this wonderful opportunity to present my take uh, on sustainable waste management and circular economy in Indonesia, uh, challenge and opportunity as part uh, of free event international conference and uh, sustainable waste management and circular economy. Uh, in this slide, yeah. Uh, as shown by uh, some uh, article from uh, Indonesia's, Indonesia's media, uh, Indonesia itself uh, has uh, begun to pay attention to the, to the topic of sustainable waste management and circular economy. The community has uh, realized uh, that an integrated uh, circular economy in a solution for today's waste management, and this activity can reduce waste uh, by up to uh, 52%. Uh, the implementation of uh, circular economy as a uh, part uh, of sustainable waste management itself is also useful for reducing the uh, use of plastic waste in the sea and uh, increase uh, gross uh, domestic product. Uh, in a uh, linear economy system, uh, the raw material needs uh, to make product will be converted uh, into this product and after, uh, after the uh, lifetime uh, ending. This product will be well then uh, be disposed uh, uh, and become waste in the uh, environment. 
Manuel uh, in this in the circular con mindset, uh, product that uh, have expired uh, can then uh, be required or recycled so that uh, they can be reused, which uh, automatically uh, reduce uh, the amount of waste in the environmental. Indonesia uh, has uh, enormous uh, potential to adopt a circular, circular economic system. Uh, this, uh, this is uh, evidence uh, by the uh, five sectors in Indonesia, including uh, food and the trades, which uh, produce approximately, uh, uh, approximately uh, 55 uh, million tons of waste. Uh, tech Textile, which uh, produce uh, 2.3 million tons uh, of waste construction, which products uh, uh, 29 uh, million tons of waste uh, wholesale and retail uh, trade, uh, which products uh, 5.4 uh, million tons of waste and wells as uh, electro uh, electronic equipments or e-waste that products uh, 1.8 million tons of waste. Uh, of this, uh, of this, uh, which uh, this pipe sector nutrition uh, of, the, uh, of Indonesia's uh, GDP and employ uh, at uh, less more than uh, 43 million people and to, in uh, 2019. Uh, there have been effort made to uh, improve uh, the implementation of green industry uh, industries in Indonesia, including to adoption of uh, cleaner production, uh, energy conservation, uh, resource efficiency, eco design, recycling process, and the use uh, of low carbon technologies. As can be seen in the material flow analysis scheme for uh, waste in Bali in uh, 2020, uh, waste, uh, waste from the source uh, is also uh, transport to uh, waste bank, first, uh, first uh, intermediate collector and 3R transport depot, which are 4.5% uh, uh, wet white. Uh, and then 3.7% uh, uh, and 4.29% uh, with wet uh, weights, uh, respectively. Always in this uh, facility, we will then uh, manage and utilize, uh, utilize yeah. uh, the remaining waste, the transport to the intermediate informal collector always from this uh, facility will be sold uh, outside Bali to be recycled and reused at 30% uh, wet white wet white uh, or uh, equivalent uh, uh, 109,000 uh, tons per year. In our research, uh, material flow analysis of plastic waste in Bali was, uh, has also been mapped in the material flow diagram. It, uh, it is now uh, uh, that the source of plastic waste is 15% uh, wet white from uh, the total waste in Bali province. The waste from the uh, source is uh, then distributed to five processing facilities, namely directly transport to uh, the landfill, to the transport depot, uh, to the first medium informal collector, to the waste bank, to 3R uh, transport depot, and then uh, environment or uh, unmanaged. Based on uh, our regulation, uh, it is uh, now uh, that Bali waste uh, uh, recycling potentials 
this proves uh, that uh, waste in Indonesia, especially in Bali, has uh, enormous potential to be recycled and uh, prevented from uh, being uh, buried uh, in uh, landfills. Furthermore, uh, in uh, implement, implementing uh, the circular economy, the zero waste index uh, is also an evaluation tool uh, that can be used. Uh, the zero waste index is a tool uh, that becomes uh, an alternative as an assessment of the performance of the uh, waste management system uh, in a city or region. Uh, zero waste index is a new indicator to uh, measure uh, and compare the replacement of raw material in, uh, with a waste management system with a zero waste system. Uh, the zero waste index value for the city of San Francisco uh, uh, 0 0.5 uh, uh, point, 0 0.5, uh, the, then Adelaide, uh, 0 0.23, then Stockholm, uh, 0 0.17. Uh, when compared uh, with Bandung City, uh, 0 0.09, it uh, can be defined uh, that the material uh, can be recycled by the waste management system of Bandung City uh, is uh, 9%. is the data. And then uh, as a previous discussion, uh, there are many advantages uh, to implementing uh, the circular economy, uh, including uh, raw material efficiency with the designs, uh, increase the use of uh, domestic raw material waste recycle, encourage uh, the production of uh, reusables and uh, recyclables goods uh, and then uh, encourage the growth of the recycling industry and uh, industry and create uh, incentive for innovation and build a circular economy uh, ecosystem uh, consisting uh, of industri uh, industrial companies, retailers, uh, consumers, uh, technology providers, uh, financial uh, resource, press media, academic research uh, centers, Etc. Some of the ways uh, that uh, has the potential to be developed into a circular economy are electronic packaging, plastic, paper, textile, metal chips, uh, ferrous or uh, and non-ferrous, uh, also uh, avions, vehicle waste, uh, rubber, tires, and uh, furniture. Furthermore, based on uh, NB, uh, the Indonesia Plastic Recycling Association in uh, 2017, uh, the circular economy for uh, plastic waste in Indonesia itself so, so focus more uh, on recycling activities and effort to close the management loops uh, that was originally open and uh, result uh, in waste uh, being dumped. Uh, into uh, the environment. Currently, uh, there are not many commercial uh, closed loop recycling technologies available. Uh, more uh, of the technologies uh, available are uh, down cycle. Uh, therefore, uh, we need uh, to focus uh, more uh, on improving recycle technology and uh, economic uh, viability, uh, improving waste management and collection system to also prevent uh, leakage and uh, designing uh, proper end of life, yeah, uh, back to earth, degradable, uh, recapture, waste to energy, and uh, there are many this. Uh, there are many advantages uh, of recycling and reuse uh, of plastic waste in circular economy, which are uh, re uh, reducing uh, to use uh, of raw material or uh, natural material, assist to government in preventing pollution uh, caused by plastic waste, save energy, uh, provide income to uh, participating, particip participating uh, stakeholder, scavenger, and their families. Uh, waste bank and their members 
and uh, labor intensive recycling workers, uh, foreign, uh, foreign uh, exchange saving, raw material will uh, never run, uh, never run out uh, because it keeps uh, return, uh, return to the cycles. Uh, Dr. Wahyu, uh, yes. sorry to interrupt. I'm afraid that our time is nearly up. Maybe we can sum yes. up. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, and some uh, of the issues uh, that are still uh, in, encounter uh, in plastic uh, recycling in Indonesia includes uh, the government uh, is worried uh, about files of plastic waste everywhere. Uh, the main cause is uh, human behavior, not plastic itself. Uh, improve, improper uh, imposition of value-added uh, tax imposed on the recycling industry. The neutralization of liquid waste from the plastic recycling process has not been uh, able to be uh, managed properly. And then uh, there is no plastic recycling management system in place. And then recycle uh, regulation and policies on the provision uh, of uh, incentive and disincentive uh, have not yet been implemented. Uh, some of the challenges uh, found in the implementation uh, of the circular economy in Indonesia can uh, come from uh, regulation, social barrier, and corporate uh, culture. Uh, where uh, where uh, regulation uh, obstacles are uh, caused by the implementation of the circular economy has, uh, has not been strictly regulated, and there are indication of the lack uh, of adequate uh, support and facility to, man, to maintain uh, the policy. A social barrier come from the low uh, level of public awareness and participation uh, in circular economy implementation and corporate uh, culture barrier uh, come from uh, business ability to initiate uh, early project and uh, circular economy program and collaboration. Uh, Indonesia, uh, which is uh, currently trying to implement uh, circular economy system can pay attention uh, attention to several uh, several uh, several things uh, during uh, the transition uh, toward a circular economy, which are uh, maintaining maintain, maintaining uh, the value of product uh, material and resource in the economy system for uh, as long as possible, uh, minimize, minimize waste uh, generation, increase competitive uh, with uh, new business opportunities and innovative product and service and uh, bridging economy, social and environment, environmental benefits. Uh, key action areas, uh, areas in the implementation uh, of the circular economy include uh, production, consumption, waste management, secondary raw materials, and uh, innovation and investment activities. We can pro uh, we can provide uh, incentive to improve sustainable waste design and innovative and uh, efficiency uh, production process. We can uh, provide uh, reliable. Uh, information to consumer about uh, the, the environmental impact of product, uh, improve waste management, increase the use of secondary raw material and create the right uh, environment for uh, innovation and uh, investment. Uh, several points uh, were uh, proposed in uh, effort to produce uh, an integrated framework uh, related uh, to circular economy, including uh, strengthening uh, national and regional institution and partnership uh, to ensure uh, synergy and collaboration of the of the parties, policy and uh, regulatory uh, support the existence uh, of a uh, roadmap that begin uh, with modeling, uh, the application of circular economy framework uh, at the national level, then uh, provincial and district or city level, including uh, industrial transformation, 
uh, there are uh, incentive and recognition for uh, parties who apply the circular economy framework and vice uh, versa, uh, versa this incentive. Uh, it is uh, necessary uh, to develop standard tools to uh, assess uh, and project circular economy performance impact or uh, and benefit yeah covering the economy uh, environmental and social sector and then massive public education and uh, campaign uh, support for sustainable uh, circular economy uh, strengthening uh, of uh, integrated and update research innovation including technology uh, and national database including uh, industrial mapping uh, before I end uh, my presentation, I would like to say a few things uh, to uh, conclude today's topic. Uh, the implementation of circular economy provides benefit in terms of economic, social, and environmental aspects. The, develop, the development of a circular economy shows uh, Indonesia's commit, commitment to achieving a sustainable economic system. Uh, I uh, sincerely uh, appreciate the opportunity to uh, speak with you today uh, regarding uh, the sustainable waste management and circular economy in Indonesia. Any question, suggestion, and input about this topic uh, are very welcome. Uh, if you need any uh, information, uh, feel free to contact me at uh, the email uh, uh, right in the slide. Thank you very much for your time and attention. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Wahyu, for the nice presentation about the facts and challenges, challenges the implementation of circular economy in Indonesia. Let me highlight several points that uh, in order to implement the circular economy in Indonesia, we need to pay attention to partnership between national and local government, and then we need to strengthen our regulation, education, and research and innovation. So thank you very much, uh, Dr. Wahyu. So we are going to uh, hear from the next uh, speaker, Dr. Astrid Piandila Dahlan. Uh, good afternoon, Dr. Astrid. Good afternoon, Mrs. Gendis. Okay, um, so Dr. Astrid is a lecturer at University uh, of Indonesia for the uh, Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering. Dr. Astrid held a doctoral degree in environmental engineering from the Tokyo Institute of Technology. She has several years of research and consulting experience on ways to energy and sanitation in Indonesia. So Dr. Astrid, the time and floor is yours. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Gundis. Um, okay, wait a moment. Okay. You can see the slide, right? In the presenter. Yes, yes we can see. Thank you. Okay, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, as uh, moderators uh, uh, introduced, my name is Aswit Fiandila Dahlan. So I'm a one of lecturer in the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering from University of Indonesia. So for today's, maybe uh, among the speaker, maybe I'm here is a, as a novice. <laughs> so my experience not that much, but um, my research uh, mostly to the waste to energy. So here I want to a little bit sharing about waste to energy option in waste management system, especially in Indonesia toward the circular economy. So maybe before we move on to the waste uh, to the waste to energy, maybe a little bit uh, introduction first, maybe to the waste management uh, in Indonesia. So as we know, tackling municipal solid waste management problem is very difficult. So it's not only in Indonesia, so also in a developing country, but uh, although it's in developed country. So because the municipal solid waste is kind of complexity. So it's not about only environment. So we have another issue such as economic, social, and furthermore, it's about politics sometimes. So therefore, if we want to tackle this problem, municipal solid waste, especially in our country, so we need uh, many help to to uh, to solve this problem. So, in Indonesia, our uh, municipal solid waste um, management system is still in a linear system. So, as previous speaker, Mr. Wahyu explained that the 
uh, we have like linear and circular. So for our uh, our municipal solid waste uh, system is still in the linear system that we only gather the waste and then collect it and then dispose. So it end up in the landfill or in the environment. So basically, because in Indonesia, we still have this kind of linear system. So if I think uh, last year, uh, Bapenas and also um, Bapenas and uh, I think from Denmark, uh, Denmark and also UNDP, they have uh, like collaborate to support the development of circular economy in Indonesia. So one of the part of circular economy, not only economic itself, but also uh, waste management will part of the circular economy. So therefore uh, it will become, um, the system can be uh, shifting from the linear to the circular. So based on uh, NPAP, so based on uh, NPAP, so waste is not collected. So 61% of waste is not collected. So if we know that there is uh, only, if you can see here, only 39% is collected. So 61% of waste, um, sorry, based on this data is only plastic waste. So if you see that the waste composition in Indonesia is basically 50% is uh, organic and plastic waste is only 20, uh, 20%. So if we calculating, uh, this number, so it's kind of higher than 61% actually the waste that is not collected. So basically, if we not having coll a good collection system, like in the just in the linear, we have a gather, collect, and dispose, but the collect system is not very good. How about making in the circular? So here's the challenges. I think one of the challenges to waste management in in Indonesia uh, before. Uh, to um, to achieve a better uh, municipal site waste management. Okay, um, so if we move to the circular economy, so if we adapt the circular economy to our municipal site waste management, uh, so this uh, this diagram or design is one of uh, I think it's famous for the circular economy. So this uh, diagram flow is basically is from the World Economic Forum. So the name is cradle to cradle. So if you know the cradle to cradle, cradle to grave, so they try to make it cradle to cradle. So it's back again to the looping to the material, to the manufacturer. If we cradle to grave, so it's, it's deposed to the landfill. Yeah, so from cradle to cradle, it's become more a sustainable way to develop the uh, uh, circular economy. So in this, uh, if we can see if this, if it, if this concept is uh, adapted to the waste management system, as you can uh, see here, so the green part is the biological. So the blue part is about the technical material. So if we see in the waste, so biological material is organic and technical material is unorganic. So if we can, be, uh, uh, if we can treat our biological, uh, if we can treat the organic waste, such as uh, yeah, food waste and also the garden waste. So basically we can do the circular economy and actually we already do. So we do the composting, if you can see here, they have the option about the composting. So if we can edit more composting, so the, the implementation actually already done uh, in the several TPS or the temporary station. So we have the uh, composting in the TPS or sometime uh, in the, our household. So it's one step toward the circular economy. So if we can do the composting for the, our organic waste, actually it can do the, here, the, the circular waste. So it's back again to the environment, to the earth, or here is the farming. So farming is one of the manufacturer or the material, uh, the raw material. So this kind of ways we, we cannot make it simpler way for the circular economy in solid waste management. But we know uh, our compost is still make uh, in the small part or it's just not making um, a little bit uh, further. So if we can do the composting or other, uh, like here for the blue part is recycle one of the way. So if we can do the simple like composting or recycle, it can be more toward the circular economy uh, in our waste management system. So after, Beside, uh, beside that, it's, you can see here before the landfill is there is an energy recovery. I think as Prof uh, Sadan already talked about that the, one of the way is to recover the uh, reduce extraction from the natural source. So if we can have energy recovery from our waste, uh, we can do the, uh, we can reduce the fossil fuel, right? So because uh, uh, if we can produce electricity, 
from our waste so we can reduce the fossil fuel. But the problem is uh, waste energy in Indonesia is more to the pro and contra side. So here, actually, I want to have more depth that waste to energy, not only about the thermal, not only about incineration. We have another option for waste to energy. So basically, waste to energy, I categorize for the process. Actually, they, uh, in here, I divide it into three. So there is biological, thermal, and landfill. So basically, biological is have like an anaerobic digestion. So if we know that anaerobic digestion, it can... Um, uh, produce gas and also it can convert to electricity. Maybe we refer to this uh, diagram. Other than composting, we have an aerobic digestion. So it's actually one of waste to energy. So here we can do the energy recovery. And from the anaerobic digestion, also we have uh, we can recover uh, the electricity and also we got the some compost. So for a uh, solid residue from the anaerobic digestion, if we can uh, treat tip to better, it can uh, become uh, composting for the, uh, for the farmer. So it's time we have more additional value for using anaerobic digestion. And also, as we know that 50% of our waste is on organic. So I think we can use the anaerobic digestion, one of the option to our uh, waste management system. And next for thermal is not about incineration. We have another such as pyrolysis, gasification, and other thing is co-processing. Yeah, post sudden said in, in, the, in India, they already try to make it more to the co-processing. So they make like RDF and then uh, uh, sifting, uh, sorry, move the RDF to the cement, uh, cement industry. And Indonesia, I think we have some small, uh, small scale of RDF and we have one of big, uh, a little bit big scale. So in, in the Cilacap uh, Regency in Central Java, they already make uh, RDF from the from the municipal solid waste. So they try to make RDF and collaborate with the one of uh, cement industry in that area. So actually co-processing already done in Indonesia, but it's, um, yeah, I think it can be, uh, other country can, um, uh, can see that as an example. So if we can have more uh, treatment that like co-processing, so we can reduce our landfill uh, capacity. So, because as you know, many landfill capacities already decreased and maybe some of them have been um, limited time. So if we can do the alternative way besides going to the landfill, so it can become additionally secret economy, but also we can reduce the, our uh, landfill time. And the last thing about landfill gas. So if we can do the extracting the methane from the landfill and convert it to uh, electricity, so it's one of waste energy. But as I want to explain that the waste uh, to energy in also should be followed by uh, the collection system. So maybe here, uh, if, you can, if you can see, if we use collection system, it's still mixed waste. So we don't have any option, uh, many option. Maybe here, as you know, as uh, see that we need to have separation uh, technical again before we use another um, technology. But if we can do the separation at source, I think it's one of a uh, Jakarta uh, project. They try to make a separation at source in some uh, small, uh, small uh, what is called district. So if they uh, they try to make it the separation at source, so it become easier. So we have more to efficiency uh, here about the separation. So the the recycle it's become good. And maybe back to the circular economy, uh, again, that the waste to energy is, is one of option. So we can do more like uh, doing composting, doing recycling, and not every waste can be, uh, not all unorganic waste can be recycling. So we have still have another residue that needed treated by using waste to energy. So maybe you can see here, how about uh, which waste can be uh, treated by, Tech, which technology, so yeah. Okay, because um, so to see the waste to energy option, the consideration that we should need that first is the Department of Municipal Waste System should follow waste hierarchy. So here, the, the note here is waste hierarchy. As you know, waste to energy is one step before the landfilling. So it's a uh, that it's option before is we go to the landfill. So first we need to have reduce, reuse, and then recycling before we go to the 
waste to energy option. So as I said, we do we need to do composting recycling first or reduce at the source first before we move to the waste to energy option. And next, for the waste to energy, we should have uh, knowledge on waste quantity and characteristic. So we cannot do like copying another developed country that they are the success like Japan, South Korea, China doing incinerator. But if our waste is not uh, compatible with them, why we choose this internet, this technology? But we should do the uh, more adapting way to use uh, to choose uh, technology. And the third part is waste to energy, just a potential part of functioning municipal solid waste system. So it's not the final answer. So we should have more about um, uh, like collaboration with another option. Like I said here, waste hierarchy. So we should follow the waste hierarchy first before we move to waste to energy. But it's one of option to reduce our, uh, to reduce waste to the landfill. And the last part is waste to energy technology must fit for developing countries. Yes, so because we need we have different waste quantity and characteristic with other countries, so we should fit the waste to energy technology that better with our uh, our uh, municipal solid waste. Okay, um, so the summary is waste to energy is can be included in the circular economy system. Although when you see the diagram, uh, you see the, the waste to energy is one before the landfill, but it can be uh, it can be one of a circular economic system that the, reduce the uh, the raw material or like fossil fuel. And waste to energy option it should be considered by waste composition and quantities in Indonesia. So we should adapting adapting technology by uh, look at what kind of waste we have it. So moreover, the application of municipal solid waste system should follow the waste hierarchy. And the last thing um, that I, uh, is this my opinion. So improving segregation at source and waste collection is the first step toward the waste economy in Indonesia. As we know that we don't have good uh, separation at source and also the, our collection system is not that uh, much good. I think this one part is should be, uh, solving first before we move to another uh, technology because if we can solve these two things and our technology is uh, the efficiency is better and the lifetime for the uh, our chosen technology is much uh, better okay uh, that's all from me so if you have interest uh, in this waste to energy system please uh, 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 please contact me and we can have another uh, collaboration research thank you Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Astrid. Very nice uh, presentation about uh, waste to energy. So uh, if I may uh, highlight several things that uh, we need to identify first, uh, what kind of uh, solid waste uh, characteristic of one uh, region in order to determine what type of technology that uh, we want to uh, use. So thank you very much, uh, Dr. Astrid. If um, all the participants thank have- uh, question you can leave it uh, in a comment. So our next speaker is uh, Dr. Bagyo Yadwiyadi. Good afternoon, Dr. Bagyo. Good afternoon, Ibu. Okay, I would like to introduce you first. So Dr. Bagyo is a lecturer at University of Brawijaya uh, for the Department of Math and Science. Dr. Bagyo held a doctoral degree from University of Bonn, Germany, and the area of his expertise is environmental management and biological control. So Dr. Bagyo, the time and floor is yours. Thank you so much, Ibu Moderator. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon and good evening also, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I am so happy to be here in front of you and thank you so much, Pak Arisman, that have uh, involved me uh, in this uh, community. That is really happy for me. Yeah, the, uh, Ibu moderator have uh, said that I have studied in uh, Bonn, uh, Germany, so that I am so sorry that my English is so bad because that is my reason. My English is always confused with my German, <laughs> but that is that is only my reason. <laughs> yeah, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I will 
try to share screen. Yep. Yeah. Okay. That is a uh, related with the uh, circular economy. I will touch the important thing of the human being that play an important role for managing the base. That is the heart. That's why my tema today is about the whole hearted. What is? I cannot reach my the whole hearted in um, uh, what if we? <laughs> Um, probably we can share your PowerPoint. Okay, I can I can set, but I, uh, the, my demo I have forgotten and I cannot read in my computer. Oh man, okay. yeah, uh, that's that is my tema. The whole heritage in managing the wish. Uh, please play your own role. That is my tema. So, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I will discuss about uh, the six points. The first point is think locally, act locally. And second point is the first priority in uh, managing the wish is the man behind the gun. That is the important thing. Then number three is so the man behind the gun must get degree from God or degree from sky. Eskalangit ibu dan berbahasa sekalian. That is, uh, I mean, that is. And number four, our waste are our own responsibility. And number five, please take a part in our community and play whatever the role. And number six, Let's begin from our own family. Ladies and gentlemen, we are so happy in Malang City because uh, we have Talangagung Educational Tourism Final Waste Processing Site, TPA Wisata Edukasi Talangagung. That is in our bahasa. Why I am so happy to have this uh, final waste processing site because Ibu Dr. Dahlan have said that waste to energy is, must be fitted in a developing country. Ladies and gentlemen, I am so happy and I'm so proud uh, with the uh, Talangagung Ed Educational Tourism Final Waste Processing Site because at least five years before our government released about waste to energy, we have played. <laughs> we have played with the waste to energy in our experiment. So five years before our government launched uh, about the waste to energy. So Ibu Dahlan, please come to. Uh, Talangagung Educational Tourist Final Waste Processing Site, you will find our monument, how we can convert the biogas from our TPA, from our final waste processing site, becoming, uh, uh, becoming energy for our generator. <laughs> that is five years before our government launch about the wish to energy. The second happiness that we have in Malang is we have TPST 3R. The TPST 3R, that is a temporary uh, wish processing uh, site in Mulya Agung Bersatu. The novelty of this uh, processing site, temporary processing site, this processing site is they are so independent. 
they don't receive any money from government for operational activity after getting the facility just like that we uh, we see that for, for example this vehicles and this this halls that is from government and our, also uh, the the land that is uh, from uh, Bengkok from our lurah what is Bengkok <laughs> Bengkok is a land that uh, was granted for the chief of the desa <laughs> that is Bengkok and uh, that is the 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 novelty of this TPST 3R Mulya Agung Bersatu more than HD family family uh have the warm kitchen <laughs> i mean there are smoke and in their kitchen because they are working in tpst 3r mulia conversation i am so happy to be there and i am so happy also to be a part of them <laughs> That is entitlement. Then the such happiness that we have in Malang. As you know, we have also Malang with a bank that is the very, very big with a bank that's still operational until now. And that is becoming what is becoming an uh, action plenary uh, uh, for our national. Uh, business bank here. A lot of people, a lot of people from another city uh, have learned in this Malang Beach Bank here. And the third I want to speak about what is the important thing here. The first priority is the main time can. I know well who manage the final waste processing sites in in Palangaku. I know well who manage the TPST 3R Mulyuagung Presa. And I also know well uh, the manager of the waste, uh, Malang Waste Tank. The key is there are, uh, I mean, those people is the key people for success uh, full of uh, managing the waste here. And three institutions that I have referred before that is becoming what they tell. Percontohan that is uh, becoming uh, ex exemplary uh, in in our national level, and now I yeah I know well that those people, the key people, the key person who manage the three institutions that I have referred before. They have the decree from our God and uh, the decree from the sky. Not only decree from our Bupati, not only decree from our rector, but they have decree from God. So that for the lifetime activity is managing uh, the base here lucky lucky sampai tiada lagi so until they are they cannot work in this in this institution so they work there one thing that i have good impressions for the people 
there. They have said to me that if all the pasukan kuning, what is pasukan a yellow squad, now the waste, now the garbage. So that is in our bahasa is sampah. The sampah is the abbreviation from S A M P A A N H. Semoga we do hope ah Allah God melimpahkan rewarded pahala good things for the people that work about that. So that is just like japa mantra. That is like what that spirit sentence that inspire all of the English squares in Malang or our scavenger men in Malang. So if they know of our garbage, they they see the the waste. That is sent a praying sentence. <laughs> so we can. How can they get this inspiration? And what kind of curriculum needed for achieving it? I mean here is so that they can get the decree from God. That is, uh, we are in Brawijaya University concept with this uh, this uh, this case, ladies and gentlemen. And the fourth is our waste are our own responsibility. Let us solve the waste problem, domestic waste problem from in our house ourselves. If all people do like, like this, I mean, they, if they have like this, let us uh, take this in Malang. If I have put the degradable waste here and non-degradable waste here, so in some time time, the degradable waste will become our compost, and not more than three hours, the non-degradable waste from our house has been uh, taken by the scavenger man, by our pemulung. So from my house, we can say that zero waste from the quality, from the source of the waste. And ladies and gentlemen, I have built by myself this Composter, so you can you can order to me uh, to to buy that. <laughs> but yeah, that is um, my my activity in pandemic time. So I can produce that by my hands myself. <laughs> okay, Doctor Bagio, uh, apologies to interrupt, but we are running okay. out of time. That is but... the that is the last. Okay, okay, okay. thank you. Number fifth is just please take part in our community and play whatever the role because I work in uh, Brawijaya University so I uh, have made a, a collaboration with the uh, uh, government uh, in, in Indonesia, I mean from Kabupaten here, that is for example how we have played an important role, how to manage uh, to share our our good practice in Malang to to another city, and the last, let's begin from our own family. Gentlemen, I love my wife so much, so I spirit my domestic wish by myself. I don't allow my wife to spirit them. Let the hand of my wife always clean. I bring then the our domestic waste 
to the uh, carpet court by myself too. <laughs> and I act as a role of a role model how to manage the house base in uh, my local uh, city here. So I can say that I don't be kind. I I am not ashamed. I am Dr. Bakio Yanuyati and I spirit my wish and I love my wife so that I bring my garbage, my wish, domestic wish to the wish corp in front of my house by my son. Ladies and gentlemen, that is end of my, my presentations. I love my family so much. <laughs> that is my mother, my mother, and that the, the mother of my mother. And I'm so happy to accompany them to do hearts at that time. Alhamdulillah. Terima kasih. Thank you so much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much, Dr. Bagio, for a nice uh, presentation. And we have uh, two strong messages from Dr. Bagio that um, our waste is our responsibility and uh, we have to take part in our community, play whatever um, the role is. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Bagio. So we are moving to uh, next speaker, uh, Dr. Eva Anggraini. Good afternoon, Dr. Eva. Good afternoon, Miss Candice. Okay, Dr. Eva Anggraini is the Director of Scientific Publications and Strategic Information and Lecturer at IPB University. She held a doctoral degree from Humboldt um, University of Berlin, Germany, and as an awardee from German Academic Exchange uh, Service. So, Dr. Eva, the time and floor is yours. Thank you, Ms. Gendis. Uh, good, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm very happy to share uh, some thoughts uh, and to learn many thoughts from you all, from the speakers, and also, also of course, from the participants once we have uh, the dialogue or a forum after this presentation. And um, yeah, the presentation, I found that the presentations here uh, are very interesting and inspiring um, from various uh, point of views and about the waste management and circular economy. And uh, at this occasion, I would like to share uh, some thought on this issue or this topic uh, on the behavioral perspective. Um, probably quite different uh, from the one, but uh, quite uh, close to the one that presented by Paul Bangyu, just uh, we heard before. Uh, next, please. Yeah, I will start with the waste problem. I think this is a, a, a data that we we can we can get from many sources. But uh, I took more from the World Bank that because they have a very comprehensive studies on this uh, waste uh, management. And here we we we, we saw that um, in global the, the the production of waste generations or solid waste generations almost like 2.01 billion tons and um 30 percent of this uh, solid waste at least uh, uh is not well managed and we see also that um, that uh, high income countries uh, contributes more, although the uh, the population is on only uh, sixty percent of the world populations. Uh, and in average, uh, waste generations um, is one point seven four kilogram per person per day. So uh, this will uh, the the range is quite diverse. Uh, from uh, countries to countries, and also it depends on the income level of the uh, of the uh, persons of the people. Next, please. And this uh, this is the projected waste generation by by regions. I think uh, yeah, East Asia and uh, Pacific. Um, um, is the highest one, but I think this is also because of the populations. And uh, if we see uh, in the average, 
we can see here that uh, uh, some countries like America, they have in uh, they are the highest uh, uh, wage generation per capita compared to um, other countries. And so it means like here that uh, we can see also from for the next uh, slide, please. Yeah, if we see the waste generation by the income level of uh, or the GDP, that we, we can see that uh, actually the higher uh, the income of the of the countries, the higher uh, actually waste generated. But but uh, of course uh, here we we can see that what kind of waste they generated. Uh, so probably in the next slide, uh, I think next slide, please. Here is, uh, if we see uh, the region of East, uh, Asia and Pacific regions, so uh, these are the, the countries, uh, Singapore, they produce um, higher actually for, for solid waste. And Indonesia is uh, yeah, still like, quite low, I mean like um, compared to uh, countries like uh, Singapore, our, our neighbor countries. Um, next. But if we look at the uh, what kind of the compositions of the waste, so um, food and green in in uh, in global level, that food and green are still uh, the the majority of uh, waste uh, generated by the people, and then uh, we see also that uh, rubber and uh, leather and uh, sorry paper and cardboard and uh, plastic, so. Um, and the, the graphs in the right side um, highlight, I mean, like give us some message that the, the, the less economic uh, development of the countries, the, the more they produce uh, the, or generate the organic waste compared to um, uh, the high level, uh, high level, high income uh, countries. Means that uh, it seems like, um, yeah, it's it really reflects the uh, uh, consumption behavior of the people in uh, the countries. And uh, I will um, emphasize these uh, presentations on the plastic uh, waste as it's related to our research uh, by HSEs uh, last year. Um, and we would like to see that next next slide, please. The, yes, this is the various use of plastic. So we can see that uh, there are many kinds of uh, uses of plastic uh, in pro starting from the household, the industry, the, the shipping and uh, fishing. Uh, and they are, um, most of them are not uh, well uh, managed. And next, next slide. And if you look at the uh, waste collections, we see that uh, yeah, the waste collection for in the low income countries, uh, about 40, 48% uh, waste in the city, but, uh, and then uh, it's getting less uh, in the urban, um, uh, in the rural areas. And uh, uh, in Sub-Saharan Africa, uh, some, about 44% waste are collected. Uh, and uh, the, the highest collect, uh, waste collections, um, uh, we can find it in Europe and Central Asia. So um, uh, Indonesia, for example, like, still like um, quite uh, find, find some difficulties in waste collection. So we, we, we would like to share with you our, our result afterwards. Next, next, one, next slide, please. And uh, so waste disposal. So for the waste disposal, so um, we see that this, I think this Prof. Sadan also uh, before the, he presents this uh, data that um, most of the waste um, are uh, disposed uh, in op open dump way, 
uh, in general uh, in, in, in the global level and uh, there are some others that have been um, do in a sanitary landfill and also uh, some have been uh, composting and uh, and uh, there, uh, some also also like um, recycling that they uh, about uh, 13 percent and this if we see that uh, according to the income level of the countries then uh, we see that for low income countries uh, most of the waste are disposed uh, in open dump ways, so which is not um, environmentally friendly, of course. And uh, yeah, this is uh, the figure of the uh, global level on waste uh, problems, uh, which I would like to share. And next, I would I would like to share about our uh, research, uh, recent research. This is more on micro level, um, at the household level, the how the household um, hand, handle the, their waste and and this reflect their behavior. So next slide, please. So uh, the, the research was conducted, uh, uh, were conducted uh, in two uh, regions, one's in Bandung and the other one is in Bekasi. Um, and we highlight some uh, findings here. Uh, first is about the consum consumption preference um, that we found that uh, that uh, higher use of goods in uh, sachets, I mean products with the sachets, and uh, and this because of practical use and affordable price are the most reasons by the community. Next one, next slide, please. And how the uh, household handles the, their their waste. So uh, we found that uh, in Bandung Regency uh, is. Um, quite uh, advanced uh, compared to the uh, Bekasi, that uh, in Bekasi, uh, most of the ways um, are handled and they, they, the people burn uh, the, the ways and some many of them also like they throw to the uh, river or uh, to the water canal or to the uh, like empty space uh, surrounding the, the area. And we found that in, in Bekasi that uh, very uh, limited um, facilities are available for, for the people in the river basin uh, area. So uh, it makes them difficult to uh, handle the waste uh, properly. Next, next slide, please. Yeah, uh, but if we ask them about whether uh, about the willingness to reduce or to reuse, we saw that it is very optimism that they have kind of um, uh, optimism that they they would like to reduce the plastic use uh, and also the to to reuse the plastic. Uh, but uh, of course, um, if we look at the daily practices, uh, it's it's quite it's. Um, yeah, uh, much different from what they thought. So this is some kind of bias that we find uh, about uh, the 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 uh, the knowledge or the awareness uh, is not reflected in their uh, daily practice. And our research of, uh, also uh, measure the uh, willingness to pay if we offer some kind of uh, uh, improvement in the waste uh, management in that area. So next slide, please. This, this slide uh, show that, um, next slide, please. Uh, about the willingness uh, to pay for the improved household waste management services uh, in both uh, regency and here, uh, uh, we offer several uh, alternatives or scenarios for, for the local community, uh, how to improve uh, the uh, waste management in that area. And we found that um, there is an increase, of course, uh, in the willingness to pay as the uh, better uh, way of the host man uh, ho waste management. But uh, we, uh, 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 we saw some uh, differences in the preference uh, among, the, among the local communities, uh, both uh, in both regencies. 
that uh, uh, the one that in Bekasi that they have a quite low uh, willingness to pay for the improved uh, waste management. So this is uh, mostly um, uh, um, determined by the socioeconomic background of the local community. And Dr. Eka, sorry yes. for uh, interrupting, uh, but we are running out of time. Or probably we can sum up. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. I would like to, next slide, please. I'm sorry because I could not operate the uh, share screens uh, directly because of some problem. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, uh, maybe the next slide. I, I would like to share about some uh, highlights about this research. Next slide. Yeah. So these are uh, uh, the highlights of this uh, research that main constraints uh, in implementing waste management in, in the regency that uh, lack of waste facilities uh, and human resources uh, in number and capacity uh, are, are, are mentioned as the uh, constraint for developing waste management in that area. And also for uh, uh, particularly for the Bekasi that uh, distance and lack of uh, capacity of the final waste disposed are very um, uh, constrained or hampered to, to deliver the, uh, the waste properly. And uh, the, uh, I highlight the behavior that uh, improper littering, littering behavior and waste management and also consumption preference, uh, which, uh, which is more uh, plastic oriented. And also that, um, in that area, there are we call, uh, several uh, bank uh, waste, uh, uh, which is uh, organized or managed by the community. But um, most of the cases we found that um, uh, the, the, this, uh, this way, this communal waste management is useful, but uh, less profitable. I think this is quite, uh, this is the one that what Pak Bagyo uh, uh, told us before is, the, the best one, I guess, because they are very independent and they, they, they don't depend on any, any uh, support from the governments or other parties. But in, uh, in Bekasi that we found it, uh, um, they are not profitable. So in many cases, uh, they are uh, unsustainable. And also the, the uh, uh, regulation are not well enforced. And I would like to share next slide, please. Um, probably you can, uh, yeah, next slide. Uh, next slide, please, so because of the time. Yeah, so um, I think this, uh, this well, no, uh, before, yeah. Uh, I think the one that uh, we would like to highlight here because uh, uh, waste management, uh, of course, uh, uh, for the basic one, that it needs uh, changing behavior uh, into the pro, pro environmental behavior. So uh, we need some kind of intervention that uh, that can uh, urge or uh, influence the community to uh, change the behavior in littering, in consumptions, and uh, in, in managing their, their waste. And the one that Bagyo uh, share is very, very uh, a, a good practices, but uh, it's, uh, it's not uh, easy to find it in the, in the urban area or in the slum area or in the, uh, even in the rural area. Because in rural area, we found that very um, lack of facilities and this has been uh, doubled by the littering, uh, 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 improper littering behavior. So it makes the, the problem become, becomes more uh, complex. And I think some kind of uh, stimulus or incent incentives uh, that need to be uh, um, uh, devoted uh, to, uh, to change uh, behavior of the people. And um, I'm sorry because I could not finish the presentations. Uh, I have still uh, some slides actually, but maybe we can continue with the discussion. Uh, uh, otherwise I will make uh, Miss Gendis. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, thank you, Miss Gendis. I think uh, I will stop my presentations here. I'm sorry, it, it gets uh, quite slow because of I could not uh, share the slide uh, directly. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Eva, for sharing uh, the result of one of uh, research conducted in Bandung and Makassi. 
uh, the thing that we can highlight uh, that uh, we are we are facing um, challenge in solid waste management because of several reasons. Um, first, is littering behavior, and then lack of facilities of waste management, and also the consumption preference uh, to use more uh, plastic. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Eva. So we are going to have the last but not least speaker, uh, Mr. Arisman. Good afternoon, Mr. Arisman. Yeah. Okay, um, briefly introduce Mr. Arisman is the executive director of Center for Southeast uh, Asian Studies. He has been involved in various research projects and consultancy, for example, ASEAN, USA, the EU, GIZ, NORAD, and ILO. So Mr. Arisman, the time and floor is yours. Yeah, uh, thank you, Gadis. Uh, this is the easy part to be the last speaker because already presented by all speakers. Uh, I would like to highlight a different topic uh, related to the sustainable waste management and circular economy, especially uh, the topic on EPR, Extended Producer Responsibility Policy in Indonesia, a solution to plastic packaging waste and pollution. Uh, as we know together, the uh, application or uh, adoption of the EPR in many countries, mostly in uh, e-waste or electronic waste. Since the uh, growing issues on the marine plastic pollution, there's uh, also 2019, Indonesian government launched a ministerial regulation on the EPR roadmap. Uh, okay. Yeah, uh, I will try to be... Uh, Pass. <laughs> so this is the trend in the plastic consumption. Uh, we look at the data, there's a positive correlation between the GDP growth rate and plastic consumption in the region. And there was also increasing trend of uh, plastic consumption, especially, especially the packaging, 40 until 50%. Uh, and if we look at the composition of plastic packaging, uh, uh, 60% is in uh, food and beverage industry. Uh, this is uh, show how uh, important the role of producers, especially from the FNB industry. If we look at the theoretical perspective on the benefit of EPR, uh, is an environmental benefit, economic benefit, of course, social benefit. Uh, for the environment, of course, this is uh, also uh, an incentivizing obligation of the company toward the eco design one of them and then from the economic side also to reduce cost of recycled material relative to virgin materials and from the social as we know indonesia also uh, informal sector is playing role uh, uh, scavengers uh, so this is a net integration so this is a uh, uh, three uh, benefit of epr if we uh, talk about epr for packaging uh, this is uh, the supply chain from uh, raw material suppliers to manufacturer, uh, producers, or the packaging user uh, going to the retailers and ending by consumers, and uh, also the collection by the local municipalities. Uh, the idea is of BPR is producer responsible until the end of life stage of its product. So this instrument of policy for sustainability in terms of financing of waste management. Uh, we look at the whole supply chain, also mentioned by previous speakers, Dr. Astrid. The issue of uh, Indonesia to achieve circular economy, there's the two factors, how to improve the waste segregation in the source or the household. And the second one, how to improve the waste collection. It's also mentioned by uh, Dr. Eva. Uh, Indonesia also lack of uh, waste collection in several parts of, uh, not only in urban, but also in some part of in rural area. Uh, if we uh, try to look back of the EPR system, the basic principle of uh, uh, EPR system itself is a collective responsibility. Uh, and Indonesia last year just uh, launched uh, Indonesia Packaging Recovery Organization, which is, uh, is a voluntary basis from six FNB company, Nestle, Lever, Danone, and Coca-Cola, uh, to try to uh, take back their uh, uh, product, uh, but this is in the early stage. Uh, this in ASEAN, there's also Vietnam already start with several companies, but this is uh, still in the voluntary basis. Uh, in uh, 
many aspects of the world of EPR. We look at so many scheme, but uh, Indonesia looks like uh, try to start with the voluntary basis. And uh, in 2019, uh, Minister of Environment uh, launched the Ministry Regulation uh, 75 2019. The philosophy of this uh, regulation is to reduce waste, uh, especially for the uh, FNB packaging, yeah, by 3R, and uh, the roadmap itself uh, is for 10 years, and the target uh, is a manufacturer, a retailer, and food and beverage services. Uh, this is a uh, food and beverage, including a hotel and restaurant, retailer, including modern store and a traditional market itself, and also this is uh, for the manufacturer, FNB, also cosmetic and personal care. So this uh, roadmap, not only for plastic, but this is also for other type of product like paper and glass. Uh, this is uh, the framework from the Ministry of Environment, and the target is to reduce waste 30% uh, by 2029. So uh, the idea is how to, uh, from the reduce uh, perspective, to use good packaging, container are easily to decompose uh, naturally, and then from the recycle perspective, how to use raw material, the content recycle materials, and the third one uh, to the, from the reuse, uh, how to take back uh, post-consumer reusable good packaging. Uh, so this is so many uh, uh, model of system like a deposit return system, as well as already exists like West Bank in Indonesia. So this is, uh, is more detail on uh, the target of implementation by uh, 10 years, so like uh, how to reduce uh, for the product uh, based on the size like uh, PP. Uh, PP is one of the type of plastic uh, based on sachet, like mentioned by uh, Dr. Eva. Uh, we have a sachet culture. Uh, it's a simple, cheaper, and easy to get. And the second one from the hotel and restaurant sectors or food and beverage industry, type of plastic will be banned, including the, uh, we call it uh, food, uh, sorry, uh, plastic catalinaries, like uh, for a spoon, a straw, and others. And from the retail sectors, uh, of course, uh, this is related to plastic bag. Uh, Indonesia, several local government already banned of the plastic bag, but still there's a debate on this uh, because of the recycling industry also complain because uh, all the according to them uh, still can be recycled and this is uh, now it's discussion also in our Ministry of finance is it possible to tax the plastic uh, in what kind of uh, plastic to be uh, tax or levy for uh, uh, plastic bag and uh, we also did a small survey uh, last year uh, uh, when the regulation uh, launched uh, in 2019. In 2020, uh, we tried to ask the uh, producers, especially for the two type of producers, retailers and hotel and restaurant industry. Like uh, in the retailers itself, uh, the type of plastic use is uh, HDPE and LDPE. For the hotel restaurant, of course, the PP, uh, polypropylene, and uh, PS, polystyrene. And uh, we also want to know uh, the perception from the producers. Uh, is it the regulation is good for them or there's a benefit for them? And looks like uh, they have a positive uh, response. But when we ask the question, uh, if the producer should be responsible for the cost uh, by take back their product. Uh, so it looks like uh, still resistant, 58% uh, uh, disagree. So the, uh, they believe that the responsible should not only by producers. Uh, and then uh, we also asked the question about uh, is there use the label on the product packaging indicating that compostable or recyclable? looks like 76 percent said no it means uh, the consumers they don't know this product is recyclable or not and uh, related to this uh, previous question uh, who the stakeholders should be involved in the plastic waste reduction plastic waste reduction so this is all the uh, 
uh, like company, society, all the stakeholders, uh, like mentioned uh, by previous speakers. So need uh, involving all the stakeholders uh, for we are talking about plastic waste reduction. Uh, of course, uh, the motivation of environment uh, is one of the highest motive if they want to reduce the plastic waste, but uh, still uh, the second one of motive is uh, related how to follow the uh, government regulation. So I think uh, that's all my presentation. I look forward for discussion. Again, uh, EPR uh, policy is quite new in Indonesia. Still need more studies and further research for this. And uh, I think uh, the same like previous speakers, we need um, collaboration to all stakeholders, not only producers, uh, also society, uh, and as well as a government regulation in the local context. Thank you so much, Gindis. I look forward for discussion. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Arisman, for bringing a new perspective um, from uh, extended producer responsibility as one of policy that can be implemented uh, in uh, implementation of a circular economy. So um, actually we're running out of time, but uh, I think we're going to um, have one uh, question to probably Professor Sadden. Uh, are you still? Professor Sadden already live, I think. Already live, okay. Uh, perhaps um, we would like to know uh, a general uh, remarks or question for all speakers that how can we foster in the implementation of circular economy uh, in Indonesia? Probably we can start first with um, Dr. Yun probably as uh, closing remarks as well. Please, Dr. Yun. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Uh, actually, uh, if we want to boss uh, the circular economy in Indonesia, I think that it is uh, responsibility for all stakeholders, not only for the customer, industry, or public community, but we have worked together here. Then first, the government, they must take a lead of this. So they must have a best regulation, good regulation, applicable regulation, integrated regulation, which can be applied uh, in uh, any sector, every sector. And then the second one is uh, the involvement of, for example, like industry and also community, customer. And also the most important thing is uh, from the education level. So, so the education level must also be involved in this uh, situation to boost the implementation uh, of circular economy. I think that's my uh, yes closing statement. Thank okay. you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Yun. Uh, probably we can go to Dr. Wahyu to give closing. Okay. Remarks. Okay. Thank you for sharing what uh, from me. Uh, so just uh, number one, the uh, strengthening uh, national regional and partnership uh, to ensure uh, synergy and uh, collaboration of the parties. Uh, uh, and then uh, policy and uh, regulatory support is uh, important. And then the existence uh, of a uh, roadmap need uh, uh, to uh, develop circular economy framework at national level and then the provincial or, or district levels uh, uh, including uh, uh, maybe industrial transformation and then uh, there are incentive and recognition for parties uh, who apply uh, the circular economy framework and vice uh, first uh, this incentive uh, it is uh, necessary to develop uh, standard tools to assess uh, and project circular economy performance, uh, impact uh, of benefit, yeah, covering the, the economic environments and social sector, and then uh, massive public education and campaigns uh, support uh, for susten uh, sustainable circular economy and strengthening uh, of uh, integrated and updated research innovation, including technology 
and national database, including industrial mapping. Uh, maybe that's all from me. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Wahyu. So uh, probably now from Dr. Astrid, some concluding uh, remarks. Okay, um, I think from Dr. Yun and Dr. Wahyu already like having all the closing remarks, but for I uh, think for me, just to summarize, so yes, uh, the government should be led there, should uh, lead us to become better. And also us as our uh, Indonesian should also uh, start from our housing. So if we want to have a waste management system with the circular economy, so we should start from our house first. And then we should follow our leader, which is government. I think that's all from me. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Astrid. And probably now from Dr. Eva Mangreini, some closing remarks, how to fostering the circular economy implementation in Indonesia. Thank you. Um, I think circular economy requires uh, both uh, in uh, technological innovations and social innovations. So for um, technological, we know that how this uh, the innovation in technology can uh, reduce the our uh, dependency on the natural resources by uh, producing more uh, products from the the use of the waste or uh, like uh, our producing energy from from the waste rather than extracting the the resources. And for social uh, innovations, uh, this is very important. And I think this, this should be uh, uh, conducted like, um, I mean, should be paid more attention because it is very, very uh, difficult and it's, uh, it's quite, it, it, it needs like kind of evolutions. Uh, it's, it's not uh, possible to, to change the behavior to, or to encourage people to behave pro environmental. Uh, because there are many uh, social, yeah, many factors that uh, in, uh, influence their uh, behavior or their consumption uh, preference. But uh, with some kind of uh, social innovation, probably with some kind of intervention, or uh, probably uh, how to nudge uh, the, uh, 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 the 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 community or the people so that they behave uh, in in the in the way of the environmental friendly, uh, it will be. Uh, very very uh, important and also the social innovations i think it is really important to encourage the collective actions because uh, a circular economy the 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 uh, on farm or, or the on site uh, of uh, of the problems is the the, the waste and these uh, waste are uh, public baths uh, uh, which are very difficult to solve uh, uh, so uh, it needs uh, collective actions, I guess, and and uh, all people, all uh, stakeholders should uh, contribute to, to solve this this problem. And also the other, the, the, the last one is about the governance, and where uh, not only governments, of course, uh, who should play a role in the in the governance of the, of the uh, circular economy, but uh, uh, in uh, Indonesia, um, uh, governments still play the most important and private sector, I think, can be the potential collaborators for, for supporting this circular economy. I think this is uh, my statement. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Eva, for the closing statement. And maybe we are going to hear from Dr. Bagio. So, back to my... Thank you so much. I give my stressing uh, for the human being awareness. Uh, we must uh, give our effort so that the awareness of all the people uh, increasingly uh, by any kind of uh, methods how to increase them. For me, myself, I prefer to use our own religion to do that. If we manage our ways, it gave opportunities for us to get the benefit not only in our world, but in our jana, in our paradise. That is all from me. Thank you so much.
Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Bagio, for the closing remarks. Uh, and last but not least, Mr. Arisman. Yeah, uh, thank you uh, for fostering circular economy in Asia. Uh, because I touch on the EPR, uh, I think uh, government should have a comprehensive policy uh, because like we know Indonesia uh, need more harmonization on inter-ministry uh, regulation. Uh, when we're talking about plastic waste itself, uh, I think almost like 20, 20 ministry. So again, uh, law enforcement is important. We have the already important, like mentioned by previous speakers. But the second one is incentive system for industry, how they want to change their business model if there's no incentive system from the government. Uh, and then the last one, uh, uh, I believe all stakeholders, including the society, business, and the government itself, should change their mindset to be more sustainable. I think that's all from me. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Arisman. So we are uh, at the end of uh, the event. We are apologized to not uh, be able to answer all of your uh, questions. Uh, but we agree that this webinar has been very informative and also engaging on behalf of CISIS and ASENA project. I would like to express our gratitude and appreciation to all distinguished uh, speakers, uh, Dr. Yoon, Dr. Wahyu, Dr. Astrid, and then Dr. Bagyo, Dr. Ervan, Mr. Arisman, um, for uh, giving us a new insight in circular uh, economy. So we received so many insight from so many aspects and we believe that our today's discussion will contribute to development of sustainable waste uh, management, particularly in Indonesia. And this event will not be uh, very engaging without uh, the enthusiasts for, uh, from all the participants. So thank you very much. Uh, for all the participants to joining us uh, in this uh, webinar. So uh, I'm looking forward to meet you uh, all in other uh, occasion. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, have a nice day and stay safe, healthy, and happy. Thank you very much, all. Thank you very much, all. Thank you. Thank you, <laughs> thank you Dr. Yun. Thank you, Dr. Baggio. Thank you, Eva. Thank you, Astrid. Thank you, Bu Astrid. Thank you, Bu. Ibu Dahlan kita tunggu di Malang, Bu. Jin, insyaallah, Pak. Pak. Kepengen yeah. jalan-jalan ke Malang, nanti Pak. Nanti sama. Saya nanti sama Pak Arisman. Ya, ya. Ntar nanti ikut Pak Arisman saja nanti. Ya, ya. Betul, Pak. Ya, Pak Bagio. Oke, Pak Bagio, makasih. Jin, jin, insyaallah. Saya ke Malang insyaallah mampir, Jin, Pak. Saya boleh. Oh iya, nah. saya Bu, saya jadi relawan siapapun yang berhubungan dengan tiga hal tadi saya akan mengantarnya. Oh, jadi, yeah. gitu. yeah. Yeah. jadi brokernya saya. <laughs> <laughs> Pak Yun dari Magelang, Pak. Nanti. Yeah, yeah. Oh, iya, Pak. Bu, Bu Yun, uh, yeah. Ibu Retno yang uh, lagi dokter 